Hello and welcome to Eagle Rising. Now, you may be wondering where the Banner King series is. Okay, I've got to say I am very, very sorry, but I will not be able to continue that series. For some reason, Tailworlds decided to release a stealth update, and that has completely broken all of my mods. We're going to be selecting Sandbox here as I explain further. I have been trying for the last week, ever since the first episode was released, by the way, I have been trying to work on this. I've been trying to update my mods, I've been trying to roll back my mods in the versions, I've been trying to uh, verify the game cache, I have been trying to do basically every single thing I can think of to get this to work. We're going to be picking Batania Culture, and we're going to be playing as a female character this time around. Pretty amazing, oh yes. And we're going to be making her slightly taller. Actually, uh, should, we, should we make her smaller? Let's actually make her a little bit smaller. Maybe it's going to be useful. Anyway, yeah. So I have obviously been trying really hard to try and get Banner Kings to work. No matter what I try, nothing actually solved the issue. And that is very sad. And then, uh, yeah, then uh, yesterday I was like, okay, I'm, uh, you know, obviously the last few days I've been trying to get Eagle Rising to work as well because I was having some problems with that too. But we have a wide variety of quality of life mods and various other things installed right now. So if you want to take a look at the mod load order and the mod list itself, that is in the description. So you can take a look at that. Otherwise, I was trying to get that to work. And then what does Tailworlds do? They release a paid DLC. Yes, it's a paid DLC that isn't really anything to do with the gameplay or anything like that. But they released that and that actually broke my butter loader launcher, which is what I used to launch the game. And then I had to update that as well. And I thought to myself yesterday when I fixed the, you know, fixed the problems that I was having with Eagle Rising, Yay, I'm actually done. Yeah, I'm actually fantastically done with everything that I need to do. And then all of a sudden, no, now now it won't. Now it won't launch. Anyway, what we're going to be doing with our character creation here is I am literally going to be selecting every single low option. So every single option that is in the lowest possible position, we are just going to be taking that. We're not going to be min-maxing at all. And when we get into the game, that's going to add a little bit of extra challenge because as far as I am aware, every single low option doesn't have anything to do with combat. So no two-handed focus points, no polearm focus points, no one-handed focus points. None of the melee skills will have any focus points in. So anyway, we're going to go for bards, skill with horses, sold product at the market, march with the camp followers, you treated people well, and age 50 is what we're going to be going for. And we're going to be going for the little bird there, and we're just going to take whatever colors they give us, and we're going to be calling her Frost Maiden, like the old character all the way back from the first, uh, and indeed every subsequent Prophecy of Pendor series, as well as the Sturgeon Viking series, because Iceni was actually a Sturgeon Viking as well. And if you'd like to check out that playlist, there is, uh, there's no doubt a, a link somewhere. But um, yeah, whatever the case, I would highly recommend checking that out because, uh, yeah, things happen. Let's just say that she gets married and a lot of people die. Anyway, Iceni, let's do this. And we're going to be going for a Bannerlord preset apart from player received damage being on 50% because I just don't want to die instantly to every single thrown weapon that comes my way. And otherwise, everything is looking pretty good, including battle death for all heroes. And we're not going to be auto allocating clan member perks or anything like that because I actually have Distinguished Service installed as well. And I would like to be able to make use of that. Anyway, we're going to go straight on in here, get some recruits. Oh, very, very lucky. I like, I like getting these recruits uh, early on because that actually prevents a, a lot of potential uh, difficulties. You know, you know what I mean. A lot of potential bandits uh, to worry about and all that stuff. Anyway, there is another mod that I have installed that I have never used before. And this mod is really useful. It's called Wear Tournaments or basically something like that. And what it does is it basically adds this little button here. And you press this button and then it tells you exactly what kind of reward you can expect to get from any of these tournaments. And then you can go to those tournaments and hopefully the reward will be the same. However, there is actually a sub mod available for this particular mod and it allows you to lock the reward in question. So the reward will not change. However, and you got to be a bit careful about this. As far as I'm aware, the sub mod for this mod was actually causing me to crash. That could just be me. 
Not sure, could be something else to do with my setup, but just be a little bit careful about that if you yourself are going to try to, uh, you know, try to install that. But I personally really like this because it tells you exactly what you need to know. I think it is absolutely amazing. And we're just going to be going to uh, Jaculon. We're going to be going over there and uh, we'll see what we can do. And that is actually all the way in uh, Dryatican territory. Because bear in mind, obviously, we are not playing the base game. We're playing Eagle Rising. And uh, all of these guys are very different okay maybe we can work out something uh let me see how much do you want you want 151 yeah sure there we go then and uh let me see if i can actually escape from these guys it's gonna be uh oh there's a lot of them isn't there we're gonna come back and absolutely murder all these guys by the way they are being extremely extremely rude to us and now i have even less money to bet in the tournament i'm very sad now oh no Oh well, never mind. I'm actually going to be taking these javelins and actually just selling them real quick just for a little bit of extra cash to bet. And we're just going to go straight on in to the tournament. I actually have no idea. Mm. We're still going to be getting the scalpel. I think that's a little bit worse than the previous reward. I think that is a little bit worse, but it's all right because we're going to get some nice cash and we're going to be able to hopefully win this relatively easily. Bear in mind, I'm obviously not very... Oh, I haven't actually trained. <laughs> oh, I should have trained. Oh, well, never mind. We're just going to have to do this without training then. That's fine. You know, as long as I'm, uh, as long as I'm doing damage to this guy. Yeah, there we go. As long as we can assist our forces in achieving victory, that is all we need to do. And we're just going to bet here. I only have 290, and now I have nothing left. Okay, so now we just have spears. Oh, where are you going, sir? Where are you going? Are you serious? Come back here. There we go. Okay, he's actually coming back. Okay, so now we just have two spears. This is obviously not great. Although, to be fair, I think because this is Eagle Rising, they've actually remade the spear combat. They seem to have reworked it and made it actually fun. Because before, uh, spear combat would just be the worst in these kinds of situations. But, as you can no doubt tell, it actually seems to be quite um, quite damaging. Actually, quite damaging. Anyway, this guy's going to get absolutely murdered by the blue team. So I'm actually going to circle around here and try and kill this guy. There we go. Nice. <laughs> that was actually perfect. Uh, I can't access my character window. I tried. I tried to access it, but... Oh, well, never mind. We're just going to have to make do with what we have right here. And I have no focus points in anything. Do I have... Oh, I have some thrown weapons. Oh, okay. That's actually going to be kind of useful for us. Maybe I'm going to be able to use this. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Nice headshot. There we go. Nice headshot. Another one. Oh, I missed. Ah, oh, no. Oh, wow. I actually thought I could get super lucky there. But no, no such luck. Anyway... He did almost die from those two hits. And now we're actually against Lassand again. Not a big fan of going up against him because he's actually kind of good at what he does. I've got to be a little bit careful about him though because he's going to have some decent skills. I don't have anything in comparison. Can I get some headshots? Oh, there's a headshot, but look at how much damage I'm able to deal with him. Basically none. No damage. That's really bad. 27 damage to the head. I mean, really. That's kind of harsh, isn't it? Anyway, we're going to hopefully go for a bit of a Centurion slash Praetorian kind of build. Uh, maybe a Legionnaire kind of build with Iceni. I'm not going to stay with the whole Batanian aesthetic or anything like that. Although, to be fair, I think it might actually work with her quite nicely. But I'm thinking because this is Eagle Rising, it might be a nice idea for us to go for kind of like a Roman aesthetic. But let me know what you think about that. And also, by the way... By all means, suggest other mods that you'd like to see in this series. Obviously, they do have to be save game compatible, because otherwise that's obviously not going to work. Anyway, there we go. We have achieved victory, and we did get the scalpel, which is actually a better sword than what I have right here. And uh, hilariously enough, I can actually sell this sword right away for 3000 500 which I think I'm actually going to do. And then we're just going to equip her with some decent things. Hopefully that's actually going to work out. Whoa, look at this. Look at this cape. This cape is looking pretty fantastic. Look at that. I like it. All right. Yeah, I like that quite a bit. Anyway, uh, I think I would like to buy some horses. So I think I'm going to have to do something about that. I'm also not going to be... Um, I'm not going to be kind of uh, selecting sp specific units to use for my army. I'm pretty much just going to go with whoever I can get my hands on. So that means bandits, 
That means any units that I come across, I'm going to be taking them all into my army and then making them work for me in whatever fashion we can make them work. That's it. So if we can if we can get some people, I mean, I have um, I think I have party screen enhancements. Yes, I do. I have party screen enhancements installed as well. So that is obviously going to make a pretty significant difference. Uh, this guy needs tools. I don't really care about tools, sir. I would like to actually do some battle against this fellow. So what we're going to do is I have a one handed right now. So I'm actually going to go for three points in one handed. We're going to go for a couple of points in athletics. And we're also going to go for a couple of points in smithing. I know. I know. It's really quite amazing that I'm going for smithing. I know. Yes, indeed. And I'm thinking, because we're maybe going to be kind of like a centurion, kind of like a legionnaire kind of kind of person, it might actually make sense for us to go for throwing weapons. I know, I know. I have used a bow in a previous series. I've also used a crossbow. And I'm thinking maybe it would be kind of cool to play with a thrown weapon. So I'm going to put another focus point in that. And we're going to get some javelins. And we also have five influence by winning a tournament as our charm skill. And I'm thinking this is going to be really, really useful as well. Now, there is a strategy or a specific technique that I would love to be able to show you later on that combines smithing and roguery. I'm not sure if you've already seen this yourself, but if you haven't, then it's going to be maybe quite a quite a cool, uh, quite a cool little surprise. Maybe maybe a cool little little feature that maybe you you haven't thought of, or maybe is going to be uh, kind of an interesting thing for you to see. So I'm not going to spoil what it is or anything like that, but I'm very much looking forward to trying it out and actually seeing if it works for me because I've not tried it yet. I don't know whether I'm actually going to make it work, but it would be very cool if we could because it's uh, it's sounding pretty exciting to me from what I've heard and uh, people told me about this. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure if it's very widely known right now, but it's going to be a lot of fun to so sort of try it as I say anyway let me see if I can okay I gotta be a bit careful about these guys I'm actually thinking of getting off my mount right now because it feels to me like mounts are really really hard to use don't know whether that's just me but it feels it feels like that it definitely feels like that because you can quite clearly tell look at this I'm actually being murdered pretty heavily here okay here we go there we go that oh really you guys just all got murdered are you serious right now Oh my, okay, that is, that is, that is really, what, what? Okay, I'm not entirely sure what happened there, to be honest. <laughs> I have no idea what happened there. Okay, that was, that was kind of strange. That was kind of strange. I wouldn't have expected that in a million years, but apparently the bandits are a lot more powerful in Eagle Rising, as you can quite clearly tell. But that's actually fine, because they're taking me right next to a horse village, and I'm pretty happy with that. 281. They only want 281. Okay, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, they're taking me right next to a horse village, which is absolutely perfect, because that means that I can actually buy some buy some things right here very, very easily. And we have a bit of a herd problem, I'm going to assume. Yes, we have a herd problem, but that's actually fine. Because what I'm going to do is we're just going to move over here, and we're just going to literally be recruiting some people. I have a lot of money right now, or at least I have a... A, a decent amount, you know, not an amazing amount, but I have a decent amount. And they didn't actually steal anything from me either, so I'm pretty happy with that too. And we're just going to be getting our units back on their feet. And we're actually getting some nice units right here. Who, who are these guys? Oh, look at that. I've already gotten a, a, a tier 4 noble unit. Look at that. That's looking pretty fun. All right. That's, that's cool. And, uh, oh, two troops have deserted? Why have you... Oh, because we have no food. Yes, because we have no food. Okay, yes. I was like, oh, why have they deserted? What are you doing? Why why are they deserting away from us? Okay. Well, that's perfectly fine. It's not a big deal because we just got some more uh, we just got some more food, which is absolutely fine. Anyway, I'm actually thinking that we'll go over here and try to get some noble units from Batanian territory, but I have to be a bit careful because as you can see, there's a bunch of very, very uh powerful-ish looking bandits, a lot of them in this area as well. So kind of a bit worried about dealing with those. There's an escort merchant caravan quest. I can't do that right now, unfortunately. How's my herd deficit? Now, my herd deficit is absolutely negligible now. And now we're just going to find, yeah, look at this. Look at how much stuff there is all over the place. Look at how many tournaments are actually available. And I would love to be able to do, uh, for example, this one and maybe this one. But these are really, really far away. So it's highly unlikely I'm going to be able to do anything like that. But it would be so cool. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go to Dunglanis because that's super, super close. And I'm going to try to win that one quite quickly. 
and I'm just going to go over here as well. Oh, wow. Okay, be a bit careful here, guys. Okay, these guys are actually running from me. I might want to actually attack them after we recruit some people here. Who's this? Oh, you need manual laborers? Okay, how many do you need, sir? How many do you need? You need nine. All right, okay. Uh, we might actually be able to make that work. It's maybe unlikely. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm just going to send my guys against this guy, and then we're going to get, oh, we get, to get two. We're going to get two. All right, well, that's not particularly... Uh, it's not too bad. It's not too bad, but it could definitely be better. Let's just recruit some more people here. Just want to try to go in against these guys. Oh, yeah. Disorganized state actually uh, lasts for a lot longer when you're moving. So if you stand still for a little bit of time, it is going to uh, be removed pretty fast. So that's obviously something to bear in mind as well if you're wondering about that. And um, yeah, we're barely taking any of these guys prisoner, which is kind of annoying, but oh well, can't do much about that. Okay, so we're going to go for Batani Warriors, and I can actually set their upgrade path as well, so they can technically just level up into that every single time, and I don't actually have to do anything about that. So uh, let's actually have a look at the troop trees. So you can see here, obviously, this is Eagle Rising, so the troop trees are absolutely amazing, very, very expansive, super fun to see. Wolf Warriors sound pretty fun, actually. They're two-handed weapon users. So I'm actually thinking that maybe that's not the best idea. So we're just going to go for clan warriors for the moment because I kind of need a bit of a front line, maybe with some spears, maybe with some shields. I think that sounds like a good idea. And uh, yeah, I'd like to fight some more um, some more bandits, but I'm going to go and participate in the tournament first. I am at 60% HP, which is not, not looking particularly good. But anyway, I'm going to go for increased movement speed, as I said before. I think maybe I'm actually going to be um maybe i'm going to be uh, using a spear on uh, on foot uh, rather than on a horse so having some movement speed is definitely going to make a pretty big difference we're going to go for some pole arm skill here as well and we're going to play a little bit of a um a little bit of a so should we say jack of all trades or jill of all trades in this case and we are maybe going to be specking into quite a few different weapon types and then using whatever is the best available at the time and here we go. Oh, we have a helm available. That's much better than what was available before. So I'm actually very much looking forward to this. Unfortunately, however, this is going to be... No, it's actually not better than what we... Uh, yeah, what we uh, currently have. Yeah, but unfortunately, we're going to be going in here with 60% HP. As I said before, that's probably not going to be the best thing ever. But I am actually getting some pretty nice headshots. So that's, that's quite nice. So I'm, I'm kind of happy with that. And as you can see, we're doing quite nicely to eliminate the enemy. These fellows actually have good archery skill, but this is where my movement speed comes in handy. Look at my amazing cloak. I gotta say, I'm very much loving this cloak. Oh yeah, you're gonna die, sir. Thank you very much. And you're gonna die too, sir. Yes, there we are. Fantastic. Okay, so yeah, apart from that, we obviously want to do as many tournaments as we can get our hands on, because being able to top the leaderboard is going to be pretty important for us later down the line. It's actually gonna give us a passive income of uh what is it now renown right i think it gives us passive renown and stuff like that and so if we're just running around and everything and if we're the leader of every single uh you know tournament in the in the land everyone's gonna know us and they're gonna be like oh there's iceni we need to be very careful about her you know and that's gonna be a, a real real nice boon for us that's gonna make everything much much easier in the long run and then we're not going to have to worry so much about increasing our clan tier size. Although, to be fair, I've never done that before. So I actually have no idea how much renown we are even going to be awarded. So it might be the case that they're just going to give us a, a terrible amount. They might really just not give us that much at all. So it, it may very well be the case that it is a complete waste of time. But we are getting a significant reward from the tournaments, mostly due to Chaos's tweaks, because I have increased the reward slightly because I just don't feel like it's really... I don't know. For me, the base game doesn't give you enough for winning a tournament, I don't think. I think it gives you... Well, uh, in the same situation that I was in just there, it would probably give me 3,000, maybe 2,500, maybe something like that. And I feel like that is a bit... I feel like it's a bit too stingy for my liking. So I kind of like to make it so that it's just that slight bit better. Anyway, we're just going to be equipping some new armor right here. And I'm actually going to think about just auto equipping everything from the marketplace. Yep, seems like I've already done that. And I'm going to be paying 5,600. Hmm. Do I want to do that? Yes, I think I do. 
Yes, I think I do. I want I want the best armor possible at every stage of the game because obviously we don't want to die. We want to be very, very careful about things. And I'm hopefully going to be able to attack these fellows in just a second. I'd like to attack those Barbari if at all possible. Uh, can I actually attack them straight away? Yeah, I think I can. Okay, that's actually perfect. Let's go in and just attack them straight off. We're going to get another four. We're getting pretty unlucky with these for some reason. That's kind of a bit weird. Anyway, we're just going to tag these, tag these, tag these, and then we can just up update those. There we go. Oh, can we just complete upgrade. That's very, very nice. And there we have it. Okay, so we've got some Dryatic Raiders right there. Unfortunately, I don't think I can actually fight those right now so we're just gonna have to move away a little bit might want to recruit some more people just so that we have the numbers you know you got to make sure that you have as many numbers as possible when you're dealing with bandits early on because otherwise you're gonna have some issues actually winning these um these auto resolves even though technically i shouldn't even be auto resolving i should be going in and actually you know fighting them but i kind of just want to get these prisoners done and so being able to get these prisoners relatively fast and being able to then level up people as well, it's going to make a huge difference. We're going to actually go for Batini Chosen Warriors as well. They're going to be really nice for us. And the task is hopefully going to give us a pretty decent amount too. I'm hoping that I can become a mercenary as well. I don't think I can become a mercenary just yet. I think I actually need to become, what is it, Clan Tier 1 or Clan Tier 2, something like that. I think I need to become a little bit higher level. Ooh, Batini Raiders, they are looking pretty dangerous. I do not want to fight them. Let's fight these guys, though, instead. Uh, okay, well, that's a, that's a little bit unfortunate, isn't it? Uh, actually, maybe not, maybe not. We're, we're getting a pretty significant amount of people. I didn't really want to go into a battle with uh, this person here. Oh, that's a nice shield. Oh, yeah, that's really looking pretty nice for us. And we're actually all the way around where nice. this guy has the task. So we might as well just complete it straight away. He's going to not give us that much, I don't think. No, he's only going to give us 700 which is, yeah, pretty sad. But that's the thing. As I have said to you multiple times before, the escort caravan mission and the caravan ambush, they are the best tasks to take if you have a, uh, if you have a manual laborer's quest. If you have a manual laborer's quest, try to get one of those tasks and you're going to be swimming in cash. It's going to make it so much easier. Anyway, I actually lost my merciful trait because I obviously sold some prisoners. That's what happens when you do that, apparently. Um, I, don't, I, I don't really mind about that. Anyway, let's find some let's find some tournaments. Rote actually has something going on there right now. And let's see what else. Maybe there's going to be something relatively close by to us. Hmm, I'm... Um, I would like to go for Varcheg. There's only three days left for that. I might be able to make it. Because that's a horse. Uh, oh, I'm actually starving as well. So all my people are going to absolutely hate me very, very soon. But I'm I'm, I'm trying my best to get, get what we need done. You know, to get what we need done. We need to get an economy up and running. We need to get our units leveled up. And now... I just lost a generous trait. Oh, no. Oh, that's absolutely terrible. I'm losing all my wonderful traits. Oh, well. I don't even know what those traits actually do. So if anyone knows, by all means, let me know. But yeah. Anyway, we actually did make it to the tournament. And we are indeed getting a horse as a reward for this, which is going to be amazing. I'm not actually even going to be using it. But it's definitely going to be something that I would like to uh, try to sell for a nice profit. Oh, yes. Okay, I'm actually just going to go, uh, yeah, I'm just going to go over here, try to kill this guy, I guess. Actually, never mind. Apparently, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to kill this guy then instead. Okay, there we go. Yeah, my one-handed skill is not too bad, I don't think, at least. I, I'm not sure, actually. I, I feel like it's not too bad, but maybe it is. I'm just going to try and use the one person's body to try and protect myself. I'm having bad, bad problems with this guy, though. Okay, can you actually help me out here, sir? Okay, there we go. Ooh, that was close. That was actually much closer than anticipated. I thought to myself, oh, I'm going to die. Oh, no. That would have been terrible. Okay, can you can you, can you you just... Can you stop? Can... <laughs> this guy. I don't even know what he's doing right now. He's not even trying to attack. Okay, that's, that's really weird. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, so he's going to go off into the distance there. Hopefully, we're going to be able to catch up to him. Obviously, this is the main problem with being on foot. 
But of course, this is a tournament, so we can't really do much about that anyway. But yeah, I feel like this guy is... Wow, okay. Never mind. <laughs> I thought he was going to be a bit more difficult to kill, but no. There we go. We were able to achieve victory. And we are now on the side of a named unit, so we should have a pretty easy time of things, all things considered. But let's actually see what happens. We're obviously up against a Sturgeon Bowman right now, and the Bowman is not going to be that difficult. No, not going to be that difficult at all. Here we go. Yes, yes, okay, nice. This guy's got a spear, so obviously we want to try and stay as close to him as possible. Unfortunately, it seems as though we're probably going to be fighting Apollonia in the final round. Probably going to be fighting her at least. Because she's going to be coming through with us if we win this, which I think we will. I'm surprised that she actually got killed by this guy, to be honest. Nefinius the Silent. Okay, that sounds like a... <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a that sounds like a bit of a weird name, but anyway, there you go. And uh, yeah, now we are actually up against her, but not in the final round as I suspected. We're actually in the penultimate round, and we're hopefully going to be able to achieve victory against her. Oh, she seemed to have gotten a nice nice little hit before, but wasn't good enough to actually deal any significant damage. And there we have it. Not too bad. All right, let's go on to the next one. And oh dear. It's a Sturgeon Heavy Spearman. Okay, I'm, I'm kind of worried about this. Any single time I'm up against a Spearman or any of these heavily armored fellows, especially when we don't have a particularly good weapon, which in this case is obviously an axe, it is a bit of a, you know, a death by a thousand cuts situation, which obviously is a bit, mm, you know, one of those times where you don't really want to be in that situation at all. You kind of just want to chill and you don't really want to have to fight that guy but no we actually achieved victory rather nicely and i'm actually going to be trying to equip some things here there we go and i'm going to pay 6200 that's absolutely fine because we're actually going to be selling this and then i'm going to get 11,000. oh yes there we go now that is looking real nice anyway i'm actually going to be taking some additional horses here and wow uh it's is it just me or have they increased the have they increased the speed that you get by uh, getting horses? I'm actually not entirely sure. Uh, we've got some herd deficit now, so I'm actually going to get rid of those mules. All right. Anyway, uh, yeah, we're, we're doing pretty well. Not too bad, not too bad. And we've got uh, 5,000. Why did I only get 5,000 for that? Did I did I do something wrong? No, it's because I, 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 I purchased some, some horses. Ah, that's the reason. Okay, no, that's fine. All right, that's what I meant to do, obviously. So that's great. Okay. So that now means that we have 15,000 in cash. I've leveled up multiple times, which is actually really nice. Decrease my armor weight. I think I'm probably going to be decreasing my armor weight. I think that seems pretty good because later down the line, we're going to obviously be in pretty heavy armor. Increase influence gain from battles or gain one renown and influence for each issue resolved. Obviously, if you think about issues, that is, I assume, a task. So if you're going to be doing a bunch of tasks, this is a really good thing to go for. But I'm going to be taking influence gain from battles instead. Usually that is what I, uh, I like to go for that, at least. And we're going to be going for a focus point in two-handed, focus point in pole arms. And then we're going to be going for yeah another point in endurance i think another point in endurance seems like a pretty good idea let's go in here uh we're just gonna sell all of my armor for another four thousand which is pretty nice no one has actually leveled up through distinguished service so far which is a little bit sad but that's only just because they're they're all leveling up you know we want to make sure that all of the highest level troops like for example these legionarius egregious guys they're the ones that we actually want to promote with distinguished service so hopefully that is going to happen how close are we to the next clan tier actually not that far away surprisingly enough anyway let's go back into varchek and take a look at where the next tournament is seems like hmm uh hmm, hmm yes yes okay uh none of these are looking particularly good right now i'm thinking i would like to Ooh, I was actually hoping to go into Sturgeon territory a little bit more, but it doesn't look as though... Ah, Tile, but that's very far away. Don't really want to do something so far away. Pri Praven could be good. That's going back into Dryatican territory, though, which I'm not a big fan of. But Ostakan is nearby. Okay, we're going to go for both of those. That seems like a pretty decent idea. And Ostakan, I mean, it is pretty far, but they both have a decent reward. Hopefully, we're going to be able to get there before the reward changes. As I said to you before, you can get that sub mod that locks in the particular reward that you see on that particular screen. But 
as I said to you, it maybe is going to cause a bit of a crash. At least I, I, uh, I, I, I actually saw that happen to me. But maybe it's not going to happen to you. You know, maybe, uh, maybe something to do with my setup was clashing with it or something along those lines. Anyway, here we go. Let's go in and see what we can do. We're going to get, yeah, we're going to get some wonderful shoulders. All right. I actually have no idea what kind of shoulders I have on at the moment. But these are, I think, going to be a little better. So I'm looking forward to this. Let's see what we can do. All right. So this is a, a complete free-for-all. Now, one thing that we've got to be super careful of in the future if we're not going to be using those ourselves, are the Dryatic War Falksman. This guy right here. This guy right here. If he has his default equipment, he is literally going to murder every single thing. He's very, very, very strong. Very, very strong. And I'm hopeful that we will not have to fight them uh, in a one-on-one -on -one situation or anything like that. But I, I guess we're going to find out and see exactly what happens later on down the line. But... Yeah, as it stands right now, I think we're doing pretty nicely. It's only been about, what, half an hour? Yeah, it's only been about half an hour, and we've already gotten a pretty significant amount of gear and cash, which is not bad. And I'm actually going to... Ooh, here we go. I've got a nice little bow here. Maybe I can use my bow nicely. Oh, yeah, there we go. That's a, a neck shot, and that's a head shot. Very good. Uh, I was actually hoping that my guy would actually do something. Oh, well, never mind. All right, not too bad, not too bad. We just got to make sure that we dodge this fellow. There we go, and there there we are. Yeah, I knew that he was basically one hit away from death, and that was the reason why I was kind of doubling down on trying to kill him with my range. But obviously, I don't have any bow skill, so it's a little bit, uh, <laughs> yeah, a little bit unsure as to what's going to happen there. But yeah, that guy actually almost hit me with this thrown weapon, so that's that's kind of a, that's pretty amazing for him to be able to do that, to be honest. What? Did you see that? Did you see that? That thrown weapon literally went right through his head. Wow, okay. That was interesting. I, it must have gone through the uh, the helmet, right? It must have clipped through the helmet and it looked like it hit his head, but it must have just like grazed his scalp or something like that. That would have been hilarious. Anyway, there we go. We did actually achieve victory and we are the next clan tier now, which is very, very nice because that means that maybe we'll be able to join as a mercenary to someone don't really know, but what I do know is that we're going to have a uh, slightly increased, uh, slightly increased party capacity, which is going to help us a great deal to take on much harder tasks. I'm talking about escort merchant caravans and so on and so forth, and that's definitely going to be something fun for us to do. I'm actually going to fight these sea raiders real fast. Let's just go in for a nice little auto resolve there. Oh yes, yeah, seven prisoners. Yeah, that is exactly what I want. Thank you very much. And massive. Ooh. They actually had some wine as well. Wine is always really, really good to take because you never know when you're actually going to get in a uh, in a town that actually has a really good selling ratio for that. You know, sometimes you're going to be there and you're just going to think, "Whoa, 600 for wine or 800 or whatever it is." Yeah, it's going to be pretty nice. Anyway, these guys don't have any task for us any further. I actually wanted to take that task, but unfortunately, I wasn't able to get there in time. Oh, well, never mind. We're just going to continue recruiting some units here. And Rovolt has a task for us, or they would have a task for us if we could actually enter the keep. But as you can see, I actually have to pay a bribe. Not sure if I really want to pay the bribe right now. Probably not going to do that. And look at this. Our ornate pauldrons are actually not as good as what I'm currently using. That's, that's actually incredible. All right, so we're just going to be doing this once again. We're going to be paying... Whoa, okay, we're going to be paying way too much. We're going to be paying way too much. So let me actually just have a look. Yeah, it's this helmet right here that's basically costing me a huge amount. So we're not going to be doing that. And we're just going to be selling all of this on the flip side. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to pay a thousand for that, which is pretty nice. And we're just going to be taking a bunch of extra recruits and then moving on. Ah, we got some sea raiders right in front of us right there. So we might as well just go straight on in and try to attack them. Maybe we're going to be able to... Ooh, okay. We got some Sturgeon peasants there as well. As I said to you before, we're basically going to be taking every single unit that we come across and I'm also going to be using these harpoons. The harpoon is a pretty fantastic thrown weapon so any single time I can actually get my hands on that I'm going to try and use it. Uh, in and out not looking for in and out unfortunately I'm looking for manual laborers. Generally what you're going to see is manual laborer quests at clay villages and iron villages as well as hardwood. 
that is usually where you're going to be seeing those those kinds of uh, those kinds of tasks. So if you really want a manual labor request, just check around those places and you're probably going to get lucky or at least I hope that you'll get lucky. And otherwise ridged helm. Okay, the ridged helm, I'm almost 100% certain it's not going to be Oh, never mind. Okay, it is actually a lot better. It is actually a lot better. I was about to buy a helmet for 23,000 that was 40 armor, and this is 45 armor, which is actually incredible. Lassand is actually here. Sylvind is on our side as well. Okay, that's going to be kind of interesting because Sylvind is apparently an absolute monster. She just completely murdered everyone. Okay, this is going to be a bit interesting as well. Okay, I'm going to gang up on Sylvind a little bit here. Is this Sil- No, this is not Sylvind. Oh, yeah, that, that's interesting. Okay. Oh, you, whoa, look at this. This guy actually picked up. Okay, I'm just going to pick up javelins as well. I'm going to do what, you know, when in Rome, when in Rome. Okay, I missed. Ugh, how irritating. Oh, well, never mind. We're fine. I've got two. He's actually picking up javelins. That's hilarious. Okay, so hopefully this guy's going to run at me now. I'll get a nice little headshot. 65 damage. He's taken no damage whatsoever. Okay, that's really interesting. Would have expected him to take some damage at least. I mean, really, come on. Every single other combatant must have been sleeping. They must have been absolutely sleeping. Anyway, there we go. Ooh, we do have a companion here as well. Never mind. The companion actually did get eliminated, so we don't need to worry about them any further. But now we have to deal with the Dryatic Archer. Should be fine. And I'm just going to wait for them to change their stance a little bit. Just going to be a little bit more defensive here. Usually I like to go all out in terms of offense when I have a two-handed. But I've learned, <laughs> I've learned in the past, it's maybe not a good idea to do that. Because then you're going to get murdered when you uh, at least expect it. That has happened to me before. So I'm generally tending to be a little bit more defensive with two-handed weapons nowadays. But you never know. Maybe It very much depends. Situational and all that stuff. Anyway, let's see if I can get some nice little headshots here. Nice. Can I get another one? No. Okay, I got two. So I just need to do 50 damage. Hopefully that's two little overheads for this guy. Nope, almost. Yeah, if I'd done about six more damage, then I would have been able to take him out relatively easily. But there you go. We actually did get a ridged helm, which is perfect. This is an absolutely amazing upgrade for us because at the moment we have, I think it is 25 in our helm slot. And we're actually going to be getting 45 as a result of the upgrade, which is actually incredible. Anyway, let's just very quickly go and take a look at my inventory right here. And boom, there you go. Yeah, that's 46. And I was actually using something that was 26. So yeah, that gives me 20 increase, which is actually pretty amazing. And we do have a lot of weapons here, but not as many as I actually wanted. You know what, let's, uh, let's go and actually have a look see here. I would like to get Wooden hammers. Oh, wow. They barely have any wooden hammers. That's kind of sad. Whoa, there's a helmet here that's actually better than what I have. Oh, this one. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah, they were certainly correct about the prefix there. Expensive. Yes, 234,000. Yeah, but that's actually something that I very much like about Eagle Rising. They add a bunch of armor and weapons and things like that that are actually really expensive because, let's face it, later down the line, when you get into the late game, you're going to need something to spend money on, you know? You're going to need something to spend money on, and these things are there for that specific reason. Because sometimes you're going to be swimming in money. You're going to have millions sometimes, you know, and not all the time, obviously, but sometimes you are going to have a lot of money to spend. And then as a result, you know, usually you're going to have the best gear possible. You have millions in the bank, and you're thinking, oh, okay, what can I spend money on? Well, nothing. But this time around, yeah, now you can. Anyway, there's actually a bandit base nearby, so that's really, really cool. And hopefully I'm going to be able to do that. There we go. And we're going to just head straight on in. Do I have all my people ready? Yep, most of them are ready. Let's just actually uh, spec into some couple of things. Increase your damage to two-handed weapons by 30% against shields. That's usually not going to really help me that much. Usually the only reason why I'm going to be specking into two-handed, by the way, is for tournament usage. So basically just having a suitable amount of focus points in two-handed so that when I do get a two-handed in the tournament, it's going to level it up. That's it. That's basically the only reason. So we're going to go for better handling. I think it's probably going to be a good idea. 
And we're going to go for some more smithing here as well. We also got scouting, which is actually really nice because that means that we can get Night Runner. Night Runner is definitely one of the best perks early on, at least in my opinion. And otherwise, apart from that, I think I'm just going to go for some more endurance. I know it seems like a bit weird that I'm just pumping endurance right now, but I really want to try and make sure that my athletics, riding and smithing level up very very quickly anyway we've got some dryatic raiders right there technically i could have attacked them but we're not going to do that right now we're just going to go straight on in and just try and eliminate the bandit hideout is this going to be a really really nice reward for us as well we're going to get what is it two thousand three thousand maybe even more than that just for completing the task and then apart from that we're going to be getting uh the loot and we're going to be getting experience, and it's going to be great. Anyway, we're just going to be telling our forces to charge in here. Not going to actually allow them to use ranged weapons. I don't think that's going to be too good. But I am going to try and snipe this guy. Okay, no snipe, unfortunately, but decent damage. Actually, decent damage. I'm going to snipe this guy, though. There we go. I couldn't even see him. I couldn't even see him because one of my units is actually uh, obscuring the camera. But, yeah. I was able to get a nice little hit there. Guess it was kind of lucky. Anyway, this is actually a new bandit hideout. I don't think I've actually seen this one before. I, I'm actually wondering whether this is added due to Eagle Rising or it just was generally added because it's been a while since I've actually done a, uh, a bandit base attack. So it would be very cool if this was added by Eagle Rising, but I have no idea. I have no idea. Anyway, I will try to snipe this fellow as well. Let me see if I can actually do that. Oh, almost. Almost hit him, but yeah, never mind. He did have a shield, so I was actually a little bit worried about that. I thought to myself, oh no, he's got a shield. You never know whether he's going to just raise it at the last second. Okay, so we're just going to speed things up real fast. I do have super speed installed as well. Obviously, that's going to make everything so much more streamlined for us. Oh, look at these guys. They're just chilling. They can't even see. They don't even see what's happening right now. Oh, nice headshot. Look at that. Wow, that was actually a super nice headshot right there. He literally walked into it. And I'm talking literally, because I wasn't on target whatsoever, but he walked into it and I was like, oh wow, that was remarkably good timing on my part, or very bad timing on his part, either one. Probably bad timing on his part more than anything else, but yes, anyway, there we go. We now have a bandit boss to fight. Oh yes, we do. I'm actually wondering whether I should even do the duel. Woo, this guy's a Falksman. Okay, this guy's a Falksman. I'm not sure if I'm going to do the duel. I think I will do the duel just because it's super fun to try. Uh, but yeah, I usually I'm not going to do the duel, but I'm going to do this just purely for the fact that I think it's going to be fun. Or not. Oh. Okay. Okay, that, yeah, that was actually a lot more difficult than anticipated. He had literally a rusty weapon. He had a rusty weapon, and yet he was still almost able to kill me. 5.8 renown. Very, very nice amount of renown right there. And a huge amount of prisoners as well. Very nice. Okay, so we're hopefully going to be able to sell those for a decent profit, and otherwise we're just going to level up those guys. Look at, look at the amazing amount of loot that we're getting here. This is an amazing weapon as well. Look at, look at this insane weapon. I actually feel like I should use this instead of instead of my uh, my one-handed, you know? I feel like I should use that. I'm actually going to use that. And we're just going to sell the scalpel. There's 3,000 gold. And obviously, we're going to be getting uh, some renown and everything for completing the, the task. But I think the best reward that we got from this is literally that, um, that Falx. I've been actually looking for a uh, Falx-based weapon for a very, very long time. And I've just never been able to find one when I have been playing the base game. And nowadays, look at that. We actually found one playing some, uh, some mod that adds a bunch, of, uh, a bunch of equipment and everything. So that's actually really nice. Anyway, let's just take a quick look at this. Okay, I'm going to go for Heavy Spearman, I think. Going to go for some Heavy Spearman with these guys. That's going to be really, really useful for us because, let's face it, if we're going to be fighting against the Kuzate and maybe the Azurai a certain amount. Oh, here we go. These guys are offering me a mercenary contract as well. This is absolutely perfect. All right, so I obviously can't sell most of my prisoners to... Uh, the manual laborer quest. So I'm basically just going to be selling the dryatics all the way to the ransom broker. But the sea raiders, on the other hand, we can actually sell those. So I'm probably going to be keeping those around for a little bit of time. We're just going to be getting these guys to join me. And we're actually going to be accepting this. Yep. The uh, Kut Sith Republic is offering me a uh, mercenary contract, which is actually fantastic. They are technically the Azurai, who are down here, as you can see. And we are currently at war 
against the Southern Imperium. Okay, so this is actually pretty perfect because now I can actually start earning influence and influence is then going to translate into cash and then I can make even more money and we can do wonderful things. So yeah, increase my drawing speed with thrown weapons. That's what we're going to do. There we go. And otherwise, apart from that, where's a hardwood village? There's a hardwood village over there. Hmm. There's also a potential manual labor request over here too. So I'm thinking we might go down here. Yep, wait a minute. Hello. There is an exclamation mark. Let's hope. Let's cross our fingers. Yeah, there it is. Okay, fantastic. We do have one. 10 prisoners. I think I have 10 prisoners, don't I? If I don't have 10 prisoners, then I might want to go to the nearby town and see if I can get an escort merchant caravan quest or a uh, caravan ambush or something like that. I do have 11. But I'm still thinking that maybe it would be a good idea to get a, a caravan ambush. I think a caravan ambush would be the perfect solution to this. But if I don't get one, then I'm just going to go straight back. Mm, no, I didn't get one. Okay, that's that's actually kind of sad. But oh well, never mind. I, I'm, I'm actually, you know what? You know what? I'm going to have a little bit of a, a persistence here about this particular thing. And we're just going to go over to Pen Canock. And we're going to see whether that has the caravan ambush. It might have one. It has an escort merchant caravan quest. Okay, so this is obviously a bit problematic because if you take a look at the duration of this, it's only 18 days. Not sure how, how long it's actually going to take for us to do the um, escort merchant quest. So that is obviously a little bit problematic. So I think what I'm actually going to do is just, just complete the quest as it is right now and just settle up really, really fast. 1,600 dinars, pretty decent, not too bad. And I am actually going to be able to then do the quest itself. And then we can just continue onwards because let's face it, it's going to take me somewhere. Yours you know, it's going to take me pretty far away in my opinion. So let's just go ahead and do that. And we're, they're, they're going to pay 389 per day, which is actually pretty good. They're going to be traveling to Kerban Seth. Okay, that's absolutely fine. No problem at all there. I actually wonder how many. Oh, hello. What? They have 80. All right. Okay, I have my two-handed. Bear that in mind. I do have my two-handed. So let, let me see if I can actually use that relatively well. Okay, this is gonna be um, this is gonna be kind of bad. This is gonna be kind of bad for us. Okay, I'm actually not entirely sure if we're even gonna be able to achieve victory here. To be honest, uh, yeah, this is this is actually awful. But hopefully, my Falx is gonna do a massive amount of damage. Oh, it does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would, that damage, that damage was crazy. All right, so I'm just going to basically leave my forces back there because my, um, I mean, the opponent is obviously going to be running into us quite obviously a lot. And, oh, this, this weapon. This weapon is absolutely incredible. Love it. Absolutely love it. Basically, the more that we can actually deal damage to these, uh, these cavalry, the less that my forces have to actually deal with them. Let me actually just tell my forces to charge in a little bit because it seems like they're just getting uh, just getting murdered by the enemy's cavalry, which is really bad. But I can't really do much about that. I mean, you know, these guys, if they want to if they want to do damage, they're just going to do damage because they can just hit and run really, really easily. And my forces don't really have the ability to fight back against them. We don't have that many spearmen at all. And as a result, it's going to be much more difficult than you might expect. As you can see, these guys are literally not even... They, they haven't even taken any damage. Look at this. 78 damage I dealt to that guy. Didn't even die from it. So that means he's taken no damage at all. Which is really bad. Okay, we might be okay just purely by luck, I, I think. Just purely from luck. I don't think we are doing very well in general. Because good luck trying to use strategy against these guys. When you don't have any spears or anything like that, it's going to be really, really difficult to stop enemy units from just running in doing damage with whatever they want and then just running out again because that's what they can do actually going to see if i can eliminate this guy with my throne weapons i'd like to get a, a little bit of throne weapon skill as well yeah i'm getting pretty unlucky here oh there we go i actually did hit him on the end but unfortunately he did manage to escape sad that is very very sad oh well never mind i think i should be able to speed things up and that should be a victory for us yes indeed it is wow that was a pretty significant fight as you can see right there but look at the amount of influence we're going to get 38 influence 20 renown oh yeah come to me thank you very much i like that and now we're actually going to be doing a uh I think we're going to just, just do a, a real quick auto-resolve. I think that's going to be nice and easy. And look at the amount of prisoners we gain just now. So here's the thing. I would love 
if we can do this, I would very much love if we could uh, actually get a manual laborer quest now, but I am highly assuming that that is not going to happen, okay? Highly assuming that that won't happen, but anyway, uh, what horse did I get just now? This, this step horse is better than what I have? Yeah, apparently it is better than what I have. All right, all right, that's absolutely fine. Pretty good. And uh, yeah, we can actually just move on now. I am super worried about actually getting attacked here. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be bad. Um, I'm actually just going to recruit people in a panic right now. Because if we get attacked, numbers are basically going to be the only thing that will kind of help us. Okay, gang needs recruits. I'm just going to go here. and We're just going to ransom our prisoners, I think. Because we're going to get attacked again. Who's this? Is this someone that actually has medicine skill? No. She does not have medicine skill. Anyone that has medicine skill right now, I would love to be able to recruit them almost instantly, please. That would be amazing, but no, it doesn't seem like that's going to happen. Anyway, uh, oh no, actually, I think I'm getting attribute points every two levels. Yeah, I think I'm getting attribute, attribute points every two levels. Anyway, increase my charge damage by 20%. I think that's probably what I'm going to be going for. And we have one focus point, so what do I want to spec it in? That's the question. Two-handed, I guess. Because I want to try and make sure that all of my uh, combat skills are relatively good. Obviously, as you can see, I don't have a pole arm at the moment. So, of course, I haven't leveled that up at all. We'll see. Uh, no, I'm not, not going to take any more of that. There we go. And this guy has now regenerated, thankfully. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to catch up to him. He was a little bit quick off the draw there. Uh, okay, so there, there's just 40 raiders. Okay, so we should be absolutely fine against these guys. But, <laughs> uh you know, don't don't hold your breath, you know, don't hold your breath. That, that is kind of harsh, isn't it? That is very, very harsh indeed. And I did take quite a lot of damage in that particular attack as well. And, oh, no, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do they actually have some, some infantry this time? If they have some infantry, then I'm going to be very pleased. That means everything. Because if they only have cavalry, it's going to always be extremely irritating to fight against them. But yeah, no, they only have cavalry. Oh, they have horse archers as well this time. Yeah, and they also have spears, and the spears are annoying to fight against. Who would have expected that? <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, we're going to have some issues here. We are going to have some big, big issues. Just kill that guy. There we go. Yeah, not too bad. Can we actually stop them? Yeah, there we go. Nice. We do have a couple of spearmen, as you can see, so they were actually able to stop them in their tracks, which is exactly what we want them to do. But yeah, generally, if we are going to be caught unawares by someone then they're definitely going to just do free damage they're going to do free damage and they're going to get out of there without any problems whatsoever and they're going to take no damage themselves and just get out but seems like we're actually fine we're seemingly well we're a bit reeling you see we're reeling from the last fight but we are recovering quite nicely i think and you can see here yeah we're taking very few casualties this time around okay not bad, not bad. I was a bit worried there for a second, but yeah, I think we're okay. And uh, I just really want a medicine companion. I was actually hoping that Distinguished Service would actually give me a, um, a you know, a chance to actually level up someone and they can become our, our medic or something like that, or even our steward or, you know, our scout or whoever it is. And we're just going to be auto-resolving the last little bit of raiders there. We've got some more prisoners, which is always nice. We can level up these guys. There we go. And, uh, yeah, we actually have some spears available, too. I'm actually thinking that maybe I'll use a spear. Not, you know, generally. I mean, you know, obviously using a spear is, is probably a pretty good idea. But I don't really want to use one all the time. You see, I don't really want to use one all the time. So we're just going to be using this uh, just to make sure that we can do damage on our mount. Spear brace. You can do spear brace with that one. You can... Can you couch lance any of these? You can't couch lance any of these? I mean, couch lancing generally is a little bit... Eh, a little bit unreliable for me. A little bit unreliable. So that's generally why I don't tend to do it that much. But yeah, it could be a little bit problematic. Anyway, we are still moving. Okay, let's just have a look-see. We have three settlements. Okay, so he's moving to Sionan this time. I'm assuming that he's just going to go around Batanian territory. That's pretty much all he's going to go around. So we shouldn't have too many problems with this. I'm actually just going to go in and sell a bunch of our stuff. I do have... Uh, I have nothing to upgrade. I locked this, as you can see, to try to see if we had anything. And I have enough food as well, but I only have grain. Do bear that in mind. I only have grain, which is pretty awful, by the way. Don't ever do that, but yeah. I mean, if... if if you're like me and you're trying to just, you know, 
get a good start and you don't have time to purchase anything, then don't feel bad about that. Don't feel bad about that. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. Anyway, there's some actually really cool things available here. Like, for example, this is actually a shield. All things considered, this is actually a shield. Um, can you actually... I want to see what it looks like. Oh, it's got what? It's got it's got skulls on it. That is cool. That is actually super cool. Shall we buy this? What does it give me though? It gives me six hundred hit points. Is it really a shield? I I'm a bit skeptical. <laughs> I'm a bit skeptical, but I'm gonna try it out. Hey hey, why why don't we try it out? I think that sounds like a pretty fun idea. All right, so we'll try it out and we'll see what happens. There's also some bows here as well. As you can see, this is a uh, Hungarian bow, looking pretty cool actually. Noble Hungarian bow too. Ruby Hungarian bow. Oh what? This has 110 accuracy. What? Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe I should use a bow. I mean, that's the point. I'm going to be a bit of a combat master here, or a weapon master, shall we say. So I'm going to try to go for basically every single thing that I can uh, in terms of weapon types. I'm actually thinking I might buy this, but then we have to swap out something. Oh, well, never mind. Not going to buy anything else apart from this. And then we're just going to wait for the caravan, and then we're going to move on. And we're going to see where they want to go next. Oh, they're going to go to Varchek. Okay. We might have some issues with some of the bandits there, but I'm hopeful that we won't have too many problems. This guy's going to have a manual labor Oh, no, no. Almost a manual labor request. All right. Let's go in here. Uh, should I do an auto-resolve? I think I might try an auto-resolve here, because I'd like, I'd like to get some more prisoners, more experience for our people, and then we'll just level up a bunch. And we'll go for some more spearmen here as well. Spearmen are obviously going to be something that I'd very much like. As you can see, we took some pretty significant damage, but that shouldn't be too bad because I think that's probably going to be the final battle. Oh, no, no, we, we do have some barbarians here, but that should really not be any threat whatsoever, as you can see. Super, super nice and easy right there. All right, and good amounts of loot too. And we can now go in and yes there we go okay we got 19 <laughs> 1900 mm. that is not exactly what i was looking for to be honest i was actually hoping for a lot better than that but okay anyway we're just going to be selling all of my armor as you can see we did gain wow 8000 from that which is pretty nice and we also have a tournament going on here too so i think i'm probably going to be doing that tournament in just a second i'm going to be probably taking combat tips Purely for the fact that I want to increase the recruit level of units of the same culture with you from NPCs. That's the only reason why I will take that. I think that is indeed a party leader. Yep, that is a party leader skill as well, so that's really nice. And we're also going to be going for meaningful favors because 10% better chance for double persuasion success. Yeah, that sounds like a really great idea for me. And otherwise, a medicine skill, what do we want to do? Increase character healing rate by 30%, increase character's movement speed by 2%. I think that sounds like a great idea. However, preventative medicine is definitely not something that you want to overlook because character healing by 30% of lost health after each battle, that can be a lifesaver. It can actually be a lifesaver. But I'm going to be taking self-medication just purely for the fact that I want the most movement speed possible. There we go. All right, so let's just wait here for a little bit of time until it gets to a daytime. And then we're going to be going into the tournament. And we have a pointy war sword. All right. Yeah, the pointy war sword is actually not even a bad weapon, as you can see. It's actually pretty good. I think I used this quite a bit in another playthrough, and it was actually really effective, surprisingly effective. And we don't have any thrown weapons here, unfortunately, because for some reason we're, we're the Sturgeons and we don't have any thrown weapons, but yeah. Anyway, this is actually a little bit worrying to me, because this guy has heavy armor, as I said before. Not a big fan of dealing with heavy armor combatants. They're usually quite difficult for me to deal with, as you can see. Considering I have very little, uh, very little skill in the various weapon types at the moment, it is very difficult to deal damage. Ow. And I walked into that. That's exactly what I do every single time. Exactly what I do. So I've got to be really, really careful about how I actually react to enemies moving into my combat zone. Because if they move into my range, I need to make sure that I am hitting them but whenever I do that, every single time they move in, I'm just mistiming it. It's very, very frustrating, but it's okay. I'm going to get better, all right? I'm going to get better with that kind of thing. I don't know why. It, it seems like a new a new issue that I seem to have. I don't know. Anyway, it, it happened uh, it happened on stream one time where I was with a, with a two-handed sword. I had a two-handed sword, and I was trying really hard to uh, hit the guy before he hit me 
And in doing so, that basically made it so that I was, you know, putting myself under undue pressure to actually attack. And in, in doing that, it actually made me get killed. So <laughs> that was that was uh, kind of counterintuitive, wasn't it? You know, it's was, it was kind of like, oh, yeah, I don't want to die. So I'm going to attack first and then I die because I attacked first. You see, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Anyway, there we go. We are now well on our way to a victory because we only have one enemy remaining. Talus the Red is our opponent. So let's just let's play a bit more defensively. As I said earlier in the episode, good idea to play a bit more defensively sometimes. And there we have it. 7,300. We've got some influence. We've got some renown. That is exactly what we want. Because the more influence we're going to be able to generate... The more renown we're going to be able to generate, the faster we can get that clan tier up, the faster we can improve the amount of units that I can have in my clan. As you can see, I can actually have 50 right now, which is pretty nice. Actually, not too bad, all things considered. And I do have 21 prisoners. Let's actually just take a quick look. Is there a village nearby that might have some manual labor requests? Maybe over here. I don't think so. Usually, yeah, they need grain seeds. How many grain right. seeds do you need, sir? You need 35 bushels. Do I have 35? I have 66, actually. So, yeah, I easily have enough grain seeds. Oh, I'm going in to speak to him. I did not want to go in to speak to him, but oh, all right. Okay, that's absolutely fine. There we go. I gave him 35 grain. It's pleasant. Very nice. And, uh, yeah, now he's very, very pleased with us. Okay, that's great. Anyway, I am actually going to go over here to Uthalame because this is a... This is a uh, hardwood village might have a task for us manual laborer task no they don't have one. Oh, look at this i actually gained the generous and the merciful trait because i did a good task or the game thinks that that's a good task giving them some grain well that's pretty good all right that's not too bad Art of the trade not really look at looking for that to be honest i'm looking for the manual laborer quest please i would love to be able to look for that and uh, the autosave is just kicking in right there. But we've got 50,000 gold right now, which is pretty nice. What I'm actually going to do is I will try to get a caravan up and running as well. But as I said, I'd kind of like to get, if I can, kind of like to get a, uh, a companion leveled up through Distinguished Service. That would be the perfect person to run the caravan. So that would be kind of nice. But I could also go for an Enterprise or something like that. I think that might be uh, that might be kind of cool too. But otherwise, we're going to go for Swift Strike here. And otherwise, I'm thinking we might go for some leadership. Let's go for some leadership because uh, you never know. In the future, we're going to need a little bit of leadership. And me having zero is not a good idea. Me having zero in focus points, is, yeah, it's just not going to be great. So we're otherwise, just going to be going for another point in Vigor here, as I said. Going for a kind of like a weapon master kind of thing. And otherwise, there is a quest to eliminate the bandit hideout. And that's probably what we're going to do. But we're going to be doing that in the next episode. I thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.